shall pay. Black Prince, I curse you with my name. You shall be Blackula. 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 The Black Avenger. <laughs> Rising from his tomb to fill the night with horror. Blackula. Dracula's soul brother. Deadlier even than he. You know, he is a strange dude. You're a nut that ran in front of my cab. You're the only imbecile on this street. Boy. Black killer. <laughs> Look at me, you found, I mean, he's got to be around here somewhere. I mean, now listen, you, wait, you take your hands off of me, I don't know you. He thirsts for your blood. He hungers for your soul. Warm young bodies will feed his hunger. Hot, fresh blood will quench his awful thirst. Thank you. I'm Bloody Mary. Are you, um, into the occult? No! How about the, uh, heavy stuff? What do you think of vampires? Vampires? I think they're possibly the most fascinating ball. More horrifying than Dracula. Black Avenger, Black Blackula, from American International Pictures. I've got some funny Planet of the Apes stories, actually, sure from the production do. of oh that. God. Of course, if anybody uh, does, it's you. You've got Capricorn yeah. One stories. You've got stories <laughs> from, oh my God, every American international film ever made. Yeah, if it's crap, if it's craptastic, I probably know a few things about it. I do have Capricorn One stories, I've actually. No that doubt. I wasn't yeah. joking. <laughs> funny. But um, all right, I'll take I'll Blackula. take Black. Well, listen, Blackula was actually that was a really fun movie when it came it out, and the sequel was fun too. Scream, Blackula, Scream. Yes. And I know you're take doing a comic book take on it, mm -hmm. which I thought was an awesome idea. And I've heard they were trying to reboot it, but walk us back to where Rodney Barnes picks up the quest for Blackula. Okay, so. Um, my mother was a single parent after yeah. uh, my parents got divorced when I was a kid. And um, she used to take me to the movies a lot. Right. And at a certain point, I guess, because, you know, before I became um, the Jedi Knight that I am, Here we there go. was questionable behavior. And she decided I needed a dad or I needed a male, proper male figure. So she started to date guys that um, she felt could be, you know, could fulfill that role. But I sort of was a part of the date. So I got to choose where we went for said date. Right. And um, I remember because as a questionable behaving child, I would stay up late at night. And that's when you would have like the Dawn of the Dead trailers and Exorcist and all of that stuff. Because they wouldn't run them during the day. They would just run them like after 11 o'clock or something like that. And I saw a trailer for Blackie. And as you may know, I've always been a fan of um, the Universal horror films and the Hammer films and never saw any black people in any of them, unless it was like a cab driver and said, right. yeah, he went that away. And, um, but never a major part of the narrative. But it's like, I see this Blackula trailer and I lose my mind. I have to see this thing. So this guy asked my mother out, like, got to take the kid. And she comes over to me, and I know this routine because it had happened four or five times. And uh, I say, I want to go to Blackula. And he agrees. And that Saturday night, we went to the Hippodrome Theater in Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. And it was the first time, not only that had I seen a, a, a Black horror, a, a horror film, you know, comprised of mostly Black main characters, but the audience was that stereotypical audience that sort of talks back to the screen and throws popcorn and, you know, uh, really, really gets into the movie. A good audience. It fantastic. It was yeah. the greatest experience of my life. So not only are we all scared together, yeah. um, it had an effect on me. Right. And in the back of my mind, this thing just sort of rested. 
over the years, I revisited Blackula, um, you know, home video and when it would come on TV and whatever. And I started to see some of the problematic parts of it that you don't see when you're like seven, eight years old. And, you know, the holes in the plot and the script and um, the lack of uh, budget and all of those things. And so, and some of the things that just came with Black exploitation as well. Mm -hmm. I said, if I ever got a shot, I would do this movie this way. Like, I would just start to work out a story in my head of how to bring Blackula into um, a modern era. Right. And so I just so happened to be working, I was writing a movie for uh, Michael B. Jordan's company, Outlier Society. And um, Alana Mayo, who used to run his company, went over to um, Orion. And MGM has the rights to the character. And Orion is affiliated with MGM. And so I told her what I wanted to do, we were just having a conversation. I said, but I don't know how we get the rights to be able to do this book. And she said, well, let me find out. And she cut through a lot of red tape and helped me get the rights, the literary rights to the character. And um, we were sort of off to the races. And then um, Jason, Sean Alexander, my Philadelphia partner came on and um, we made a book. And it's a brilliant one at that, based on a brilliant movie. I love how you kind of go down a nostalgic memory lane on the whole experience with it, because that movie was so fun. Yeah, I anytime mean, that you talk to me, is one of the few virtues of being able to talk to you, is we can reminisce. Yeah. You know, we can, yeah. we can talk about Jaws. I know I'm going to talk about Jaws, Apocalypse mm -hmm. Now. There's like seven things that will yeah. sort of act as um, a boundary between the two of us who we don't have to really communicate intimately. Right, right, right. So it's like we can, as long as we have that, we're good. If we didn't yeah. have that, if I was just like purely a sports guy and you were a movies guy, oh, we'd, we'd, we'd be at it. So, well, see, you know. We would, yes, we definitely, we're definitely not friends. So it's nice that we can fake it about some of this yeah. stuff. I mean, I feel like it's that scene in Beverly Hills Cop between us where I have to put on an anti-banana disguise. Mm-hmm. You know, when I talk to you. Anyway. Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter. Kill all masters. Go to no quarter. Killallmasters.com. Rated R.